In this video, we're going to talk about transcription, and this is IB 3.5 and 7.3. And transcription is part of a process called protein synthesis, and it's the first step into actually making a protein, uh, which is multiple amino acids connected together, making a polypeptide chain. It's a protein. And so transcription and translation uh, are the two steps that make this happen. And the first part is transcription, and this is actually when we're making our messenger RNA. And the second part is translation, where we're actually conjoining amino acids. And so in this video, we're just going to look at the, the process of transcription. In the second video, we'll take a look at the process of translation. Before we do that, though, we want to uh, take a look at the, the differences between DNA and RNA. Now, DNA we've talked about quite a bit. Um, it's what's uh, held inside of the nucleus, and it really contains that information um, to, to make proteins. To, uh, the genes uh, within the chromosomes provide that information to make the proteins. And DNA, uh, obviously, is extremely uh, important, and um, it's, it's also very fragile. And so it always stays inside of the nucleus. It's kind of trapped inside of the nucleus uh, as a means to protect the DNA. And so rather than sending the DNA out into other parts of the cells to actually uh, make proteins, uh, DNA is, is held inside of the nucleus, and we make a couple different types of RNA in order to um, move that message around. And so some of the things that are similar and different about DNA and RNA, uh, DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. Uh, in RNA, that sugar is ribose. Um, the primary difference is deoxyribose is missing one oxygen in comparison to ribose. Deoxy meaning without, um, without oxygen. Uh, the nitrogen bases that are present in DNA are guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. A uh, catchy way to kind of remember those and how they pair together is GCAT, guanine, and cytosine always go together. A and T, adenine, and thymine always go together. That's kind of a helpful way for me to remember it, GCAT. Uh, and then RNA, they're similar except for the presence of uracil instead of thymine. So uracil and RNA, all forms of RNA, replaces thymine. Uh, both have a phosphate group. And the shapes are a little bit different. DNA is a double helix, obviously, as we've talked about. Uh, RNA has a couple different types of shapes. Um, messenger RNA, or mRNA, has a single strand. Uh, tRNA has a cloverleaf shape. And there's also rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, which makes up the different subunits of, um, of RNA. Um, so to start looking at this process of transcription, uh, transcription is carried out in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So um, looking at our DNA template strand here, uh, here's our uh, 5' prime end. This would be the 3' prime end here. And we're moving in this 5' prime to 3' prime uh, direction. And so we're adding new nucleotides at the 3' prime end. Additionally, um, we've talked about introns and exons. And within eukaryotic uh, our RNA, um, such as mammals and, and, and humans and uh, uh, most other species that, that we look at, um, eukaryotic, eukaryotic RNA must have the introns removed in order to form a mature RNA. So before this process of transcription and translation can actually be carried out, um, here's our original DNA, um, here's our pre-DNA. These introns must be removed from the uh, messenger RNA in order to actually form mature RNA that can, that can be used to eventually produce a protein. Um, you don't have to know the steps that this actually occurs, just know that eukaryotic RNA has introns removed from it. A little bit of other background information that we want to look at. Um, uh, a codon is a way that we can organize or group um, nucleotides into, into a group of three. And three nucleotides make up a codon. And why this is important is because um, tRNA, or transfer RNA, which eventually is going to match up with messenger RNA, it does so at three nucleotides, or, or three nitrogen base pairs. Um, and those three nitrogen bases are forming a codon. And so one codon is responsible for one amino acid. So on messenger RNA, as we're going to see a little bit later, uh, three uh, nucleotides or three nitrogen bases in a row makes a codon and that's going to match with the tRNA kind of like a lock and key method. Um, it's going to match with tRNA and that tRNA is going to carry one specific amino acid. So you think about the DNA code or DNA strand, it's comprised of guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine, just these four different types of nitrogen bases or nucleotides and the order or the arrangement of, of these nitrogen bases is responsible for the vast differences that we see in, in all the different species because every living thing on earth has DNA 
and, and the differences that we see between these species is, is derived directly as a result of how these uh, nucleotides or how these nitrogen bases are arranged. Uh, three of those together make up a codon and they are responsible for giving the directions or calling for a specific amino acid. And we'll get into that as we, as we talk about translation. Um, and so as I said, this codes for one amino acid. Uh, multiple conjoined amino acids uh, make a protein. So if we put multiple uh, amino acids together to make a polypeptide chain, meaning which means many peptide bonds, uh, peptide bond forms between two amino acids, uh, many of these put together make up a protein. So many amino acids put together or held together by peptide bonds makes a protein. Now, when we're looking at, as we're starting to get into uh, transcription here, when we're looking at the strand of DNA, so here's our original strand of DNA, um, obviously DNA is a double helix, meaning it has two strands. And one of those is actually used for uh, the synthesis of our messenger RNA, and one is not. And the strand that is used uh, in, in, to make messenger RNA is called the antisense strand, and the strand that is not used is called the sense strand. And so uh, here's a nice images, image that shows that, but uh, let's take a look at here and, and we kind of break this down a little bit further. Uh, the sense strand is the strand of DNA that is not used to create messenger RNA. Uh, it has the same base sequence as the messenger RNA, obviously, except that thymine is replaced by uracil. Whereas the antisense strand uh, is the strand of DNA that is actually used to create messenger RNA. So the antisense is used to create messenger RNA. It is complementary or has the complementary sequence to messenger RNA. Um, so now we're actually going to get kind of into the steps of, of transcription here. Um, and this is kind of similar to DNA replication. There are some similarities between uh, the two. Um, the, the first thing that we want to look at is and, and know is that um, rather than DNA polymerase, uh, we have RNA polymerase um, that's used during transcription. And RNA polymerase is binding to uh, a promoter on the antisense strand of DNA. Um, and this is actually initiating transcription. Um, so here is our antisense, our template strand of DNA. Um, RNA polymerase is what's kind of driving all of this. And it begins, or it, it, the process in, is initiated by a promoter. It's a section of, of nitrogen bases, of nucleotides, that basically says to begin a transcription. And the RNA polymerase both uncoils the, the DNA, as well as that is going to be eventually adding those new nucleotides. Um, free nucleoside triphosphates um, are going to be bonding or connecting to our original template strand. And those nucleoside triphosphates, uh, that means that they have three, uh, three phosphate groups. Just like ATP, adenine triphosphate, um, these nucleoside triphosphates have three phosphates attached to them. And that's going to provide the energy to actually make that bond. And so the nucleosides are releasing their energy um, by losing those two phosphate groups, and they become nucleotides. And so the next step that, uh, that continues is, is basically the continuation of this process. And this uh, occurs in the, as we saw, the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. Um, and it really continues until uh, the RNA polymerase gets to a section of the DNA uh, template strand that's, that basically says to stop. It's a, it's a region of DNA nucleotides. It's a terminator, and it, and it tells the RNA polymerase to stop transcribing. Um, and so once the RNA polymerase um, un unbinds from the DNA template strand, uh, the messenger RNA is released, and that DNA template is going to rewind into a double helix. So now we can take a look at this process in a little bit more specific uh, list here uh, with a list of the different steps that's happening. A as I discussed, uh, RNA polymerase binds to promoter uh, on the antisense of the DNA template strand after uh, unwinding the, the, the double helix. Um, or uncoiling, uncoiling the double helix, um, free uh, nucleoside triphosphates are going to be added to that template or anti-sense DNA strand. Um, and in doing so, they release energy um, by releasing two phosphates, and that energy provides the, ener uh, the energy necessary in order for the, um, the phosphates and the ribose sugars on the mRNA to actually to bond uh, through covalent bonding. Um, and then nucleosides are continually added in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Uh, those covalent bonds are forming. Um, and this continues until we get to the uh, terminator on the DNA sequence. Uh, and it basically is telling the RNA polymerase to stop transcription. Uh, the RNA polymerase is released, and the new messenger RNA strand separates from the DNA 
and the DNA recoils. And so the next process of this is the, the translation process, and this is where we see messenger RNA leaving the nucleus um, and going out into the cytoplasm um, in order to uh, meet with transfer RNA and to start conjoining amino acids, uh, putting amino acids together to form a polypeptide chain. Again, all of this is happening in the nucleus to ensure that the DNA uh, is protected with inside the nucleus. Um, additionally, uh, in order to ensure that there's no mutations or anything happening to the DNA as it's very important, obviously. So in our next video, we'll take a look at translation.